What's good, you guys? Welcome back to the Off the Top Questions with Young DZ is in the building today. Yes, yeah, sir. What's up with it, big How's brother? How's it going, man? Chilling, chilling. Out the way, getting some money. Out these fuck niggas away. That's how it's supposed to go, brother. So where are you from and how old are you? I'm from Beaumont. Beaumont, Texas. I'm from the North. The Ville, PVY, it's Plymouth Village. Hell, be, whatever you want to call it. And she, I'm 26. 26 years old. So what's some pros and cons you'll say about Beaumont? Shit, there's some money out here. When you come out here, you mind your business. You can get some money. It's, it's, it's some shit you can inv- you can invest in land out here. It's a lot of land, you know. You never it's never a bad investment to buy land, bro. From cheeks to votes, shit. Mind your business, you can get some money for real. You can get you some money working. You feel me? The the, the cons, bad shit about out here, bro. Nah. Buy your business for real because it shit she can go left for you, brother. It's Beaumont, Texas, bro. She can go left from the laws to to niggas in the street to to shit friends just praying on your downfall, bro. Like, yeah. But other than that, bro, you if you mind your business, you in your own lane in Beaumont, Texas, bro. You can make it somewhere. You can make it. A, you can make it out this bitch if you move to this bitch. You can do something with yourself and don't let nobody tell you that, bro. And that's just real shit. You, you, you can make it somewhere in Beaumont. But I do got some shit that come with it. Just, just stay in your own lane, brother. So how'd you get the name DZ? All right. The name DZ, it just came from some shit. That, I ain't gonna lie. The name DZ really just popped up like two, three years ago. Just on some air time, I'm around the partners and shit. I got all kind of, they call me all kind of shit. Half a paint, DZ. Uh, <laughs> solid assassin. I got some products to call me solid assassin. But shit, Deezy, that shit come from just chilling in Deezy, bitch, Deezy. But my real nickname is Lil D or D. Lil D or D. That Deezy shit just, that shit just came about. I don't even know how the fuck it came about. I just started saying Young Deezy, you feel me? Shit. People start fucking with it. I can't, I, and I make music, so I feel like the name Lil D too dry. Like Lil D. It's too dry, so young DZ, you feel me? Young DZ, ain't really nothing spectacular behind it. So how was your childhood in Beaumont? My childhood, shit, it, it was bad. It was bad. Like, I know, and it be a lot of people on interviews saying, oh, I had it like this. A lot of people, especially in Beaumont, yeah, it, it's, it's some real struggle going on out here. I, I, had, I had a bad childhood, you feel me? Like, I grew up in a ville, you feel me? In, in the Watts, Plymouth Village. And mama did what she could. You know, mama, mama made it happen. She was by herself. Like, mama showed me that ain't no female need a man to make it happen. And, I, and like, I believe that my mama showed me that, you feel me? But growing up, like, we ain't always have it. When mama was alive, we ain't had a new Jordans, you feel me? We ain't, you feel me? Like, we ain't had that shit, me and my big brother. But shit, my mama died when I was younger, so that ain't make shit no better. Like, you feel me? So I had it bad, you feel me? But we ain't miss no meals, though. You know, mama always kept food on the table. She made it happen. If you go to the hood right now and ask about my mama, Miss Ray Kobe, the whole hood go vouch. Mama, like the mama out there, everybody go to Miss Ray Kobe house, you feel me? I'm the, yeah, you feel me? I had it bad, but you know, this shit made me. That's why I am now. Like, that's why I'm, if y'all ever notice me, y'all ever watch me, that's why I'm stuck with my kids, how I am, because of shit, I, I can't leave them out and dry, you feel me? That's why I hustle and I grind how I do, because of shit, what I done been through, you feel me? I can't never go back that way again, you feel me? That's your real shit. How many kids you have? I got three. I got two boys, one girl, Daylin. Daylin, Daylin and Messiah. How old are they? Daylin five. He finna be six. His birthday, three more weeks. Messiah, that's my baby boy. He, 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 three. He finna be four. <laughs> Another two weeks. And my daughter, Daylin, she, four. She just turned four, like, two weeks ago. Like, they all, birthdays all lined up. So all your birthdays like two weeks apart. Yeah, daily birthday October second. Messiah, Messiah and Daily the same age. Messiah birthday October twenty seventh, and Daily birthday November 9th. That, but my two babies they the same age. It was tripping. <laughs> I was tripping. But I love my kids. Though. I don't regret shit. Why would you say you was tripping? Cause bro, how the hell you get two kids on on at the same time? Like literally, brother. Like, that shit crazy. I'm still, 
fucking surprised and shocked about that shit. But shit happens, you feel me? And I don't, I don't regret it. Like, I love the fuck out my kids, you feel me? And I get ass the world. And they know that I wish my daughter was woke. She'll tell you. Like, she'll tell you, yeah, daddy the best daddy in the world. And that's how it's supposed to be, you feel me? So what got you into rapping? <clears throat> when I was younger. When I was younger, as far as I can remember, and from where everybody tell me, they used to tell me, I used to ride my bike around the bill, swear to God, I was a rapper. Like, you let my auntie them tell you, they used to tell you, they used to tell me, oh, you can learn them rap songs, but you can't learn that homework and shit, you know, shit like that. I remember an uh, old little freestyle when I was younger and shit. I been doing the shit, and when I got older, shit, I ain't gonna lie, Tom Teaser put me in a real studio for the first time with my uncle. Made a little freestyle, everybody at school was fucking with it. When I seen everybody at school fuck with it, had to be like seventh grade, dude, right after my mama died, you feel me? Yeah, seventh grade. Beginning of seventh grade, I, I had just started going to Smith. Everybody was fucking with the little freestyle. So, nigga, I used to go cut grass and shit, you know, get anything to get some little money, because I want me a studio now, you feel me? When my auntie, when I moved in, when my auntie, when my mama died, when my auntie seen how serious I was with the studio and shit, you know, she helped me out, get what I needed. And shit, from there, I had a studio, young age, I'm in that bitch working, you feel me, seventh grade. I, if you want to be real, with this generation, my generation, I got a lot of these niggas rapping. They weren't doing the shit until they seen me doing the shit young. Bro, you, I got videos on YouTube young, but we ain't going to speak on that, you feel me? But yeah, and shit, you know, nah, I'm not into the music. Well, I'm not into the rapping and going to make music how it used to be, but I still do it, you feel me? Like, I got to... I got two phones full of songs that's recorded, that's unrecorded, waiting to get recorded. I just don't be, I don't got the same energy like I used to have. I'm really waiting on Earl to come home, you feel me? But I have been doing the shit down to my whole life. Uncle Boss put me on. When and what was your first music video and how did the audience react? All right, so look, my first music video, as far as on some bullshit, was uh it had to be eighth grade. It was me, Demo, and Earl. We made a little song called No Hands. And shit, the school was fucking with it, bro. Like, it is weird, cause we listen to that song now and bust out laughing, bro. But the whole school was fucking with it. Smith was fucking with it. So we were like, hey, we're gonna bring the camera to school tomorrow. We're gonna record some clips and we're gonna make a video. You see, I'm a computer head, I ain't gonna lie. That's what a lot of people don't know about me too. I'm a real computer freak. I used to get on a computer and, and make it the videos and shit like I used to do all that shit myself you feel me so when that when we did that shit the school was fucking with it and then that from that point it led to me just taking the camera around recording shit recording videos and shit young than a bitch and putting shit on Facebook putting shit on Facebook and everybody was fucking with it bro like really fucking with it but my first actual real music video like real camera cameraman YouTube yeah, I made a song called I'm So Thorough and shit was like 12 years ago. Yeah, about 12 years ago, I made a song called I'm So Throat. And shit, uh, my uncle and them were fuck with the song. They were like, shit, they going to bring their video. My uncle Boss, GML Boss, they going to bring their video man and Jay Reese too. Shop clothes. Like, they going to bring their video man to come around there and shoot the video for me. Like, shit, get dressed and shit. Yeah, I got dressed and shit. I went and shot the video. Shit, that video still on YouTube, brother. And shit, the school was fucking with it. Like, like I always had the name for the music, D. I always, everybody knew me for the music, besides the bullshit I be pulling, but yeah. And everybody was fucking with the I'm So Thorough video. Yeah. I used to do everything myself, though. Edit photos, all that shit. Like, on my own. I should have stayed down with the shit, because motherfuckers really taking off with this shit going big. I can be a cameraman, photographer. I can do all that shit. I just... You know, put my mind to it. And that's just real shit that a lot of people don't know about me. I see that on Mike, they got 20K views right now. What was your creative process of making that song? All right, so look, <clears throat> I'm like that, that, ooh, ooh, I'm like that. Hey, how did I come up with that shit? All right, look, I was sitting in the car. I was smoking my black. I don't smoke weed, and then I was smoking my little black sitting in the car. They were like, what? What uh what year that was? Earl went to the pen. It was 2021, 2020. It was somewhere around that time, 2020, 2021. I know it was still around the time we had the round mask and shit. Sitting in the car, I hit a beat and I just got, I'm in the car vibing because when the beat come on, that's what you do. You vibe like this, you this how hard, you feel me? And I'm like, ooh, ooh. Like that's what I'm saying, like ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm like, this, this catches. I'm like, I added that. When a beat drop, I'm like, I'm like that. And I'm like, Ain't nobody really saying shit like I'm like that right now, you feel me? Like, so I'm about to 
put that together. So I just started writing a verse. Bitches, young DZ, you know I'm going to keep it cracking. Roll all that shit sitting in the car right then and there. So I'm really turned up about the song, like, and I'm just writing the shit. So a couple of weeks later, Don and A.B., my little sister, and them at the house, and shit, I showed them the song. Their reaction wasn't the reaction I was looking for. It was quiet, like, like they were looking like, nigga, that shit whack type shit. Like, that's what I got out the reaction. So I wasn't fucking with it. Earl, now remind you, Earl was in a pen when the song when I when I wrote the song. He ended up calling home. And he was like, "Bitch, you been writing every time Earl go to jail. He want me to finish what he left off, but I just be bullshitting because Earl when he get home, he really on people necks. You feel me? Every time he come home, so Earl called home like, "Bitch, you been writing." I'm like, "Shit, yeah, I, I always write." I like, look, I got this song. I want you to get on. I'm waiting on you to come home. Now, if if Dawn or A B and one of them, they wouldn't have gave me that reaction that I got out of. They probably would have been on one of the songs, but the reaction I got wasn't the reaction I was looking for. So I'm telling Earl on the phone, I'm like, man, I got a song for you when you come home. That whole hard, bro. I'm like, we can really down and make it some more. Bit. He like, say it right now. I'm like, nah, brother. I ain't want to say it all because of the reaction I got off of bro and them. I'm like, nah, bro. I ain't. Just wait till you come home. So when Earl came home, what, like the second day he was home, I pulled up on him. We in the car. I showed him the song. I swear to God, when I showed him the song and I got done, that nigga bust out laughing like, and I'm sitting there looking like, nigga, what the fuck you laughing for? Like, I really feel it played like, nigga. And he rolling like, ooh, ooh. But he laughing like making jokes out of I'm like, nigga, what the shit whack? Like, nigga, let me know what, what the fuck going on. Nigga, like, nah, fool, that shit just funny. He like, but run it back. So I ran it back. But I'm really skeptical. I ain't even fired up no more. You feel me? I was fired up to show, bro. So he fresh. I'm turned up in the car. And I ran that bitch back. And he laughing still while, while I was singing this shit. But when it was time for his verse, Man, that nigga just started breaking that bitch in the car. Like, I'm that little nigga with the bag. They be studying on their ass. And shit, we like, we going to the studio tonight. So we went to the studio. No, we went to AB house. They got, a, they got a video floating around right now. We went to AB house. We all up in that bitch getting drunk. And, and uh, nobody heard it yet. So me and Earl like, Earl like, man, play that beat. We finna run that bitch in front of everybody. We played the beat. Me and Earl ran that bitch. The whole house fired up now. I'm like, damn, y'all was just quiet when I showed y'all that shit a couple of weeks ago. But... She went to the studio that same night and made that bitch and shit. We sat on it for about a couple of months. Dropped that bitch and the whole city loved that motherfucker. Little kids, all that shit. And that song ain't even gonna reach its full potential yet. Like, I ain't even pushing that bitch. And hell got 20K just off the city. That's love. But does that not like motivate you to drop the rest of your music? Like, you been like, the people don't fuck with it and then like that? Because at the end of the day, nobody knows what's gonna eventually go viral or hit there and then just be like the number one hit song and shit like that. You right. I think my my thing is about dropping my music, bro. I know I'm hard. I, I'm hard to the motherfucker. If you actually sit down and listen, I'm hard. But my thing is about dropping my music. I think is my my dumb ass. I feel like I ain't gonna get the right people to listen to it. I not even just the right people. I feel like I'm not gonna get what I what I what I want to get. What I expected to get, and this shit gonna piss me off. You feel me? Like I'm like, well, damn. I should have just kept this shit about. You feel me? Like. But, bro, I'm sitting on probably over 100 songs from four or five years ago that I can drop right now, and it's going to go hard than a bitch. I'm sitting on some shit. I'm going to start dropping. Since we doing this interview, bro, and this shit going to have to get dropped, this interview, I'm going to start dropping songs, bro. I'm going to start. Like, I'm going to start. I'm going to full-fledged with the shit. Fuck it. And that's word to my mama. What rapper motivated you to start rapping? When I was younger, like a little kid, I'd probably say... Lil Wayne. I ain't gonna lie, I'm into all music though, so so like I'm into not all music but like old school, new school, I'm in all kind of shit, you feel me? So like I'm a music head, you feel me? I'm really a music head. Fuck, um I like the Neo when I was younger. Like shit, he cold, bro. If y'all know Neo, y'all know Neo a songwriter and some more shit. I fucked with T.I., Lil Wayne. This was around that go DJ time though. That's how old I was probably like what? First grade, second grade. You feel me? Now, growing up, middle school wise, around that time, that when the nigga, that's when the nigga started thugging. After my mama died, you feel me? That's when the nigga started thugging. You feel me? Like, I was thugging before she died, but when she died, that's when I actually like shit. Nigga. But I fuck with Boost and Webby, hard. I fuck with Jeezy and them too, but that ain't my era. You feel me? When when Jeezy and them was really bumping and shit, you feel me? They were my uncle and them. You feel me? So I know that off my uncle and them, but. My era is trail fam, you feel me? That's that's what I came up on and then Chief Keith, you feel me? Everybody was on some gang, gang, bang, bang shit, you feel me? But that's who 
right now, who I say my top three, it'll be our Rip Chief Keith, Webby, that old Webby, and shit. It gotta be like Big Mo, you feel me? Or Zero, Big Mo or Zero. I gotta keep somebody from the home, from the state. You feel me? I fuck with Big Mo and Zero, but shit show. So what's some orders you'd like to collab with in the 409? Oh, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Because <clears throat> you haven't worked with yet. I haven't worked with nobody, but no, I work with E-Body. I, have, I got some shit with E-Body. I got some shit with Kenny B, but you know, I know me and Kenny B, we gang, so that shit ain't. Man, Kenny B got that bad motherfucker right now. I just told him yesterday, like, bro, we got to do something with that bitch. But that, <laughs> yeah, we got a bad motherfucker for the females. But, uh, shit, who I want to work with, I want to work with them little young niggas, brother. Like, them little young niggas hard on both sides. I ain't going to speak on too much, but they hard, bro. And, shit, I, I, yeah, you feel me? They hard. I work with some of them little young niggas. I work with some of them, uh, shit. I don't know, bro. I ain't gonna lie, cause I ain't really into the shit, really. But that's something that I have to think about, like who I want to get on this song. But other than that, I, don't, I really be working with just the game right now. You feel me? Keep between Wild G and GML. I seen a YouTube page y'all dropped that music on. It's called GMF Lifestyle. Can you explain to us like what is GMF to you? GMF to me is the 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 the. Run down on GM Milk, that's my Uncle Boss. Now, the city, the city know my Uncle Boss. For the people outside the city that don't know, Boss was a, was a barber, was a hustler. You feel me? Was shit. You name it, that's what he was. And man, gonna spit real knowledge to you. you if, if you need it, you feel me? Like, you gonna learn something from Boss, you feel me? I don't some real shit. But GM Milk was him and his and his boys. They, they was getting money fast when they was some getting money ass niggas, you feel me? And they still lives, you feel me? So shit, Boss stood on that GML shit and GML lifestyle, that loyalty lifestyle shit. Boss stood on that shit, you feel me? So shit, when Boss died, like 2017, when Boss died, we wasn't too much really all into the GML shit. We 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 stuck on that Wild G shit. We still thugging. Then when Boss died, that made us, you feel me? Like around that time, we was on some fucking shit when Boss died. So shit, we ain't really just pushed the issue on the GML shit. So Earl Earl, one of the niggas, he used to walk around. Throwing this shit up all the time. Like, nigga, what the fuck that is? Like, what you throwing up, brother? Like, we really asking it, nigga. I'm thinking it made us some shit. He throwing this shit up, so we asked, like, nigga, what that is? Like, that's Jim Milk. Uh, he probably one of the first ones that just start taking shit serious, putting it towards the music shit, and I get it to him. Earl. d -Mar. I call him Earl, but y'all know him as d -Mar. So shit, went, uh, before Earl went to the pen, before we made that ooh song, that's when we started really fuck with the Jim Milk shit. So they're like, what, COVID time, 2020? We all went got uh, little Jim Mill shirts made at the mall and shit. We started fucking with it. When Earl went to the pen, when he went to the pen, that's when we started pushing it. So when we started pushing the Jim Mill shit, we started getting shirts made. We got the machines and shit. You know, we did that shit ourselves. Selling shirts, you feel me? So when Earl came home, we was buzzing just off of what we was doing. And Earl added the fuel to the fire when he came home. And... and that's how we started the GML shit, you feel me? But GML really, like, that's some deep shit. Like, that shit deeper than what y'all see and what y'all think it is. Like, that shit deep, you feel me? That shit real deep. Get money fast. It's get money fast, but we on some get money forever shit, you feel me? Because everybody that's GML ain't getting money fast, you feel me? We ain't taking their time with it. They got it. It's tough, but they ain't on no trap shit, you feel me? Like, niggas go to work. I go to work, brother. So, just know... We get money forever. Like, it's, it's forever. It's going to be that We ain't going back to what we used to do. Do you have more singles with the whole group coming soon? Oh, hell yeah. Boy, man, fuck y'all. Man, we got, I got, man, look, got some shit, boy, between with that, that I'm on by myself, me and Don on, me and AB, me and Earl. I don't think we got, we only got that one song with all of us because Earl ass always in and out of jail, you feel me? So we never just caught a song again with all of us, but hell yeah. Hell yeah. Females fucking with it too. Look, they it's a whole lot of unreleased shit floating around the city, and if you heard it, y'all know that shit go hard. Like, that shit hard, brother. Like, we different. Like, we, we different. So what's the future for GML? The future? Oh, man, we just talked about this the other day. We been chilling. Lately, we, we didn't chill that. For about a good year, 
probably a little long. We'll let Earl do his shit. We'll, we'll let D-Mar push his shit, videos and shit. But shit, he in jail now. So, like, we really got to finish off and we really wait too late because bro been in jail for, like, the last seven months. But the future looking real good, bro. Like, I'm finna start this clothing line shit back up. We all got inputs on it. We all sit there and talk about how we gonna do it. For music videos, we 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 got it. We got a plan. We got it. We got the plan. We just gotta go for it. You feel me? Like it's looking good, bro. We go with our plans, bro. It's looking good. Really, everybody feel like everybody be waiting on me, which is I know it ain't that, but it feel like everybody be waiting on me. But shit, it's time. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to get back in that mode. I'm back in that mode. I am. And shit, <laughs> y'all finna see. I'm finna push that line. And then and another thing, I got, I got a dude out here in the city. I don't know the nigga. He a little older. Get on the internet the other day, dude, drop, drop some GMF gear. Man, the whole city know who GMF is, though. You feel me? Like, so when I see this shit, I'm asking who this is. Like, don't nobody really know him. Well, at least I ain't running to somebody that knew the nigga yet. But I'm talking about it. I ain't got talking shit about this shit. So I got a shit on him. Like, I ain't even much mad. Like, like. But you know who you who you got the style from, bro. You got that shit from us, brother. And you ride some young niggas' dick right now, brother. So I'm finna shit on you. If you see this shit, nigga, I'm finna shit on you, nigga. And it's just what it is, brother. What's the best advice you've been given? I've been given shit. <laughs> Don't trust nobody as far as you can throw them. Uh, nah, I ain't gonna lie to trust shit. Fuck me up. So... Best advice I ever been given, that's that's one. Shit, I ain't gonna lie. People don't really I don't really take advice because I don't sit there and talk to nobody like I do. But I really learn shit based off what I've been through or my people around me or dude over there. I learned some shit off of him over there. He don't even much know that I done learned some shit off of him over there. I, I didn't sit there and watch dude do some shit. You feel me? And he got caught up doing the shit. So I put it in my head, I'm not going to, if I do what he just did, I'm going to find me another way to do it. Because if I do it like how he did, I'm going to get caught up, you feel me? Like, and that's just, that's really what it is, you feel me? Like, I, yeah, everything that I know, I taught myself the shit of what I'd have been through and watching others. You know, like, just sitting there, seeing what they go through and shit, you feel me? How is it performing in Beaumont, Texas? That shit live. It's live. The reason I said live because of it might not be live for everybody else, but it's live for us because of when you when you in a club, we already probably drinking and shit, or y'all drinking. I could be sober, but I drink, you feel me? We already probably drinking. So whatever, that bitch turned up, you feel me? We already turned up. And then uh, we get on stage, and we get on stage, I already know what it is, you feel me? Then they drop one of them songs. It could be my song, Earl's song, Kenny B song, Dawn and them. It could be the club going to rock with it. And when you see the people rocking with it, bro, that shit make you feel some kind of way, like, 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 don't turn the music off, brother. Bring it back. Like, we want to do it again, brother. Like, this shit be live in the city. I can't say outside the city. I didn't perform outside the city before. It was a couple of people that knew the shit, but it wasn't really, it, it ain't give me that vibe because not too many people knew it, you feel me? But in the city, I'm mean, not performing both my any fucking time. But now, folks got to pay their fucking fee because we've been doing this shit for free since fucking 2014, brother. No bullshit. You want me to perform out here now, brother? Unless we if we come up to an agreement, then it's cool. But if not, give me that Chibata, brother. I ain't doing shit else for free. That studio time and them videos cost. Pay me something back. Last question I'll let you go about your day, man. So how's things going for YG? Shit, it's still though, we still it's still a family. We still, you know, everybody in grew older, got kids and shit. Take care of their families. Back then we used to be wide open, wild doing whatever, but we grew out that shit, you feel me? But don't think it's, it's some sweet with a nigga in Wild G, because it ain't, brother. That's, that bullshit still on that nigga mind, brother. Real shit. But look at though. These in the motherfucker, you feel me, were off top, you know, off top, off top in the bitch with the cam, you feel me? Nah, real shit. And, and, and it's off top with the questions, with these, if I said it right, tap in with brother, you feel me, on, on whatever you need. Uh, interviews, fucking promotion videos, bro. Do I love you? Feel me? And get at me on Instagram. You feel me? At one young diesel. Yes, sir. Speed.